6 Important Facts That You Should Know About the Disruption of Venture Capital As the CEO of the Venture Fund Plus Equity Crowdfunding Platform Crowdfunder, and a member of a leadership group that was engaged in Washington, D.C. on Jobs Act legislation, I've had a unique vantage point into the massive changes taking place as finance and early stage investing are moving online. Here are the forces and trends I see disrupting early stage venture capital. Number 1, a broken VC model according to a CB Insights article from May 2015, early stage investor backed startups have only a 1.28% chance of becoming a unicorn. Meanwhile, the traditional VC model entails funding 30 to 40 startups per fund, which for a top performing fund means making winning investments roughly 15 to 20% of the time. After investing in over 1,000 startups, Dave McClure of 500 Startups shared some powerful figures about startup investment performance at the early stage. The data showed that 50 to 80% of startups yield no exit return. 15 to 25% yield a small return of 2 to 5x. 5 to 10% might reach a valuation of $100 million with exits yielding 10 to 20x. And with some luck, approximately 1% reach $1 billion valuations returning 50x or more. Number 2, a faltering IPO market. Perhaps no indicator is as telling of the infrequency of unicorns as the frozen tech IPO market. The US IPO market has suffered a steep decline since 2014, its biggest year since the dot-com bubble. Looking solely at the tech startup sector, the situation is even more dire. In Q1 of 2016, there were zero VC-backed techs IPOs. Zero. IPOs are of material importance to VCs, as the liquidity of the public markets is a place where much of their returns are fully realized. Number 3. Traditional VC Dynamics aka the curious case of Airbnb The CEO of Airbnb, Brian Chesky, recently told the inside story about raising $150,000 in seed stage funding for Airbnb at a $1.5 million pre-money valuation now valued at $25 billion. One after another, otherwise intelligent VC firms rejected him and missed out on the round. Number 4. Disintermediation through the Internet in the 1980s a handful of upstart financial services firms set out to change the way the majority of U.S. citizens were able to invest in the public markets and the brokerage firms that enjoyed near-monopoly status over access to investing. Traditionally, as was the case in the 1980s, investors had to call a stockbroker in order to buy a public stock and perform trades. Brokers made their living on the transaction fees of this activity, often as a percentage of the amount bought or sold. Number 5 New Regulations and Equity Crowdfunding What happens as investing in early stage VC backed companies moves online and becomes more open and inclusive through online investing platforms? A recent Goldman Sachs report, The Future of Finance, highlights my company Crowdfunder and a few others and defined the total overall crowdfunding market opportunity at over $1 trillion. Number 6 Scale and Diversification in Venture Capital. Given the importance of diversification and modern portfolio theory in other areas of investing, why hasn't a highly diversified approach been taken to venture capital? Some leading minds in the world of private equity and institutional investment have been asking this question for years. Recent regulatory disruption in the form of the Jobs Act are enabling seed stage investors and VC firms to invest with the same type of diversification they could achieve in something like an S&P 500 index fund, but for angel or early venture stage. I predict that the future of the early stage investing landscape will look quite a bit different in 3 to 5 years. The top tier VC firms will still be around, but alongside them, competing for large institutional investor dollars will also be more diverse models that leverage software, data, and the web.